Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this quick and simple letterhead in Word. Now, at the moment, you can just see I've got the headers and footers up, and that's because I created these graphics within the headers and footers to allow me to copy this over to the next page. Obviously, everything you put in a header and a footer will copy along to every page of your document. So if I made two pages of my letter, then this would carry over. You don't have to do this. You can just create these graphics in a normal document, but obviously they won't carry on to the subsequent pages. So let's just get rid of all of these graphics. Okay, so I've got just a normal document up here. And the first thing I need to do is go into my headers and footers. There's two ways to do that. I can double click at the top here or at the bottom and open my headers and footers. If I click in the center here, double click, then I will come out of the headers and footers. Alternatively, I can go to insert and here I can go into header and footer, click on the drop down and select edit header. And that will take you into the headers and the footers. And as you can see, I've got an additional tab at the top here, and then I can go to this one and simply close the header if I want to. So let's just insert our first graphic, go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down and select the square. And then we're just going to click and drag out a rectangle. I'm going to go over the edge of my document so that I can just fill that top bit there and just extend that out. Now it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines of the headers and footers, all the graphics will still be contained within that function. So once I've done that, I'm just going to click away and you can just see around the edge of this rectangle, I have a borderline, which I don't want for any of my graphics. So because I'm going to generally copy and paste the graphics, I'm going to customize it now and then copy and paste it. So I click on it and then on shape format at the top here, I can go along to this icon here, which is the shape outline, click on the drop down and select no outline. Now, when you click off a shape in the headers and footers, if you click down here, nothing will happen. You'll just come out of the headers and footers. I double click at the top, go back into headers and footers. If I select my graphic, the way to deselect it is to click at the top here, and then you can deselect that graphic. Now I'm going to select this and then I'm going to copy and paste it. You can do that one of three ways. You can either go up to the Home tab, select this Copy icon here, click off your graphic and click Paste. That's one way to do it. The second way to do it is Command or Control C on your keyboard followed by Command or Control V. Or the third and simplest way is to select the graphic Hit your Alt or Option key on your keyboard, my cursor will change, and click and drag. So I'm just going to delete these two because I'm going to customize this graphic here. So delete those. I'm going to just reduce the size of this one to about that size there. I'm just going to change the color before I put it on here. So I put it on there, it will disappear. So to change the color, if I go up to Format Shape, sorry, Shape Format, go along to this Format Pane icon here, click, and this menu will appear here. It may appear like this, but just click on the drop downs. Make sure you're on the bucket icon. And this is Fill and Line. So Fill is the center color. Line is obviously your border line. So if I go over to the color here, click on the drop down, and then I can select from any color I choose. So for this one, I'm going to select this color here, just reduce the size of it, just move it up here, there we go. I'm going to change the color of this background here, so click on it, click on the drop down. Now you can select from any of these colors, I've got recent colors up here. If you can't see the color that you want, click more colors. You've got the color wheel here that you can choose from by moving this cursor around. And then you can use this slider here to increase or decrease the brightness. And then your selected color will appear here. And then just click OK and your color will change. So I'm just going to select my dark blue. And now for this one, I'm going to select a shadow because again, I'm going to copy and paste it. So select it, go over to this icon here, Effects and then click on Presets, click on the drop down, and I'm going to select this one here. 
Now you can't see it, but when I copy and paste this rectangle, it will become clear. So I'm going to select it, hit my Alter Option key, click and drag out. Now you can see that shadow. Now I'm going to click away by clicking on this top white bit, click back onto this rectangle because I want to change the colour, go back over to this menu, click on the drop down, and we are going to select this colour here. And then once again, once it's selected, hit the Alter Option key, click and drag, let's move it along, click away up here. Don't worry too much about where they're aligned, we can sort all that out in a minute. Click on this graphic here, go along to Colours, and then select a final colour. Now for this graphic here, I was going to make it a little bit smaller, so if I just zoom in, so I'm just going to hover my cursor over this corner here and I'm just going to drag upwards just to reduce the size of it a little bit more. Now you can see it clicks. If it doesn't move to the, the height that you want, then all you need to do, select it, make sure you're on shape format, go along to height here and you can use these up or down arrows or you can just simply select the measurement of your choice. There we are. And then we can move that to where we want it. So that one would be on the centre of that one. So I'm just lining up these, or trying to line up these squares with the line of the one in front. Now, this can be a little bit clunky, but we're not Photoshop. We're not in Photoshop, so there we go. So now, once I'm happy with where they're spaced, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them all, which will allow me to align them. So if you select one, hold your Command or Control key down and click and select them all. Then go to Shape Format, go along to Group, click on the drop down and select Group. Now you can move all of these around as one element, which is really useful. But also, if we then select the group, but then hold the Command or Control key down and select this larger dark blue rectangle, go to Shape Format, go along to Align, click on the drop down and select Align to Middle. Now that will make sure that this graphic here is in the middle of this height here. Once you've done that, we can group everything together. So go back up to group, select group. I'm going to zoom out. And then all I'm going to do is hold the Alt or Option key down, click and drag. And then all we need to do with this one is hover over this circular arrow and just simply rotate the whole thing like this and then simply pop it down the bottom here. So that's just saved you an awful lot of work to having to repeat everything we did up here down here. You just simply copy and paste it. So back up to here and we're just going to insert the logo. So go to insert shapes, go to the circle, and now I'm going to, as I click and drag, I'm going to hold down my shift key because that will allow me to create a perfect circle. Now once again, I'm going to center this circle, so I'm going to select it, I'm going to hold my command or control key down and select the group behind. Make sure you're on shape format, go along to align and align to middle and that will just make sure this circle is in line in the center of this graphic behind. Then to click away, click at the top and then click on this circle here. Go over to this menu and for the inside color, we're going to create a gradient. So we're going to go to gradient fill and you can see I've already rehearsed this so I've already got my gradients up. So I'll just quickly go through how I've created this. So the first thing is the color. So if you go to this gradient slider here, you can see these little stops. This stop here has an orange outline, which means that this one is selected. If you then go to color, click on the drop down, and again, you can go and select any of the colors of your choice. I've just selected color from my original graphics down here, which is the pink. Then I've gone to this one here, select it. You can see the orange outline again. Go back down to color, select the color of your choice. And then if you look at my gradient now, as I drag it, you can see how it changes. So I've got more pink if I drag it to the right and out to the left, you can see it's got less pink. And that's a personal choice. 
You can change these gradients by going up to gradient preset. So here, if I click on the drop down, you can select one of these if you want to, but it will select the color. You can also select the different type of radiance. So here we've got linear, radial, rectangular, and path. I've selected radial. And when you select radial, when you go down to direction, it will give you a number of different options here. So it's quite versatile and you can play around with these as much as you like. But I've selected this top left one here on radial. Now I'm going to go down to line and this time I'm going to select a solid line to create the gap between the rectangular graphic and the circle and I'll show you how now. So if you go to color, and I'm going to select white, then I'm going to go down to width and select 10 points and press enter. And now you can see I've got not only a line around the outside of that circle, but because it's 10 points, it's quite a thick white line. And what that does, it creates that gap between the background graphic and the circle. Now this works really well if you're always working in white paper, but if your paper is a different color, you'll be able to see that white outline as a complete circle. So now I'm going to insert my logo. Of course, this will be your own logo. But if we go to insert icons, I'm just going to select a simple icon, this one here, select it, click insert. Now it's disappeared, you can't see it because it's behind all the graphics, but you can see it's selected. If you accidentally select away or click away from it, deselect it, don't panic, you can move this and it will appear. And then all you need to do is select it, go to graphics format, wrap text in front of text and then move it and then I can just move this one back so to center it again click on this one hold the command key down click on the background rectangle shape format along to align and then align to middle and then we can go up to group on the same ribbon click on the drop down and select group and now all of these graphics are one element. Now for this I'm just going to pop it over the top of my circle and then I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Now to make sure this is completely in the center of this circle we'll ungroup everything that we've just grouped. So select it, shape format, group, ungroup. Now click away by clicking at the top. Select the circle now I've selected the graphic here, so I need to click back off, go to the top of the circle. Now I've selected the circle, hold the command or control key down, click on the graphic, go to shape format, go to align, align to center, and then align, align to middle. And that will mean it's all perfectly centered. So I'm going to click away from that, click back on the icon, and we can change the color. So we can go back over to format graphic then we can go to fill solid fill color and then we'll go down to the dark blue then we'll go to effects and then we'll go to the shadow click on the drop down and we'll select this graphic here perfect now if we then select everything so I'm going to select the circle the graphic the graphic behind, go to shape format, click group, select group. Now the whole thing can be moved around as one element again, which means you can just use your arrow keys to just move it up and down to exactly where it suits. Again, at the bottom here, we can move it up and down because it's one element. And then as soon as you're happy, you can double click in the main area of your page and you'll see everything is grayed out. And that's absolutely fine because when you print it out or when you save it as a PDF file, the headers and the footers will print out perfectly. So now if I insert some text, now you can see that your cursor is all the way at the top here. And that's because your margins are around about here. If you want to change that for this particular document to allow you to start typing about here, the quick solution is to go over to your rulers. If you can't see your rulers, go to view, ruler, then click over here 
click and you can see this line appears. Just pull it down below your graphics and then your cursor will move with it. So you'll always be able to type below your graphic. Same at the bottom, if you click on your ruler here, raise the margin up above your footer and it means your text will never go on top of your graphics. Then go ahead and save that as a template and I'll show you how now. Now this, all this text has been put into a text box and then I can just adjust it. And this is all just for demonstration purposes. So now once I've inserted all of my text, then if I go to File, Save As, let's say this is a PDF, click on the drop down, go to PDF. I've called mine Doc1, click Export. I then open my document, let's just reduce the size of that. And there you have your PDF and it will all print out perfectly. And then if you want to save this as a template, so we can take out the text. And if you just want to save the letterhead as a template, you can go to File, Save as Template. Again, call it what you want. Ensure that you have saved it to templates. That's an absolute must. And then file format must be Microsoft Word template. Let's name this doc10 and then click save. And then what that will mean that if we open a new document and then here you'll see personal and office, your personal templates will be in here. And as you can see, we've got doc10 here. If I click on that, select create, then you can see it's come up as doc10. And that will now mean that I've opened it as a completely separate document. And when I go ahead and save it, then it'll ask me to save it as a new document. And you can go back and use that template as many times as you like. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.